Hello, and welcome back to the Adrian Bauer Project. Many, many thanks for choosing to click on my thumbnail and to watch my content. Very much appreciated as always. Right, a little bit of a different video for you today. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the biggest regret in my life. Now, obviously, life is just full of peaks and troughs. We all regret things that we have done and we also regret things that we haven't done. Now, there are bigger things uh, to worry about and regret that I am not going to be talking about on the medium of YouTube because it's private but this is the biggest regret I have ever had which I can talk to you about but first let's have a little bit of a history lesson well as many of you have known if you'd watched my videos in the past in the year 1979 I bought the Judas Priest album Unleashed in the East. I took one look at the cover of that album and I thought to myself, that's what I want to do when I leave school. I want to be in a band. But although I'd had musical training at school, I'd spent four years playing the trombone in E flat bass, I didn't know how to play a guitar. So I thought, right, better save up and get myself one. Now at the time my sister Lynn run a catalogue called Case Catalogue and in that catalogue they had an instrument section so I went along and I managed to bag myself a K acoustic nylon strung guitar and it was that little beast that I sat and learned to play all the basic chords also i did a few scales and bits and bobs on that came along uh, with a little seven inch vinyl single which told you how to tune up and gave you some tunes to play along with so i got all the rudimentary basics done on that and i thought well i'm never going to be in a metal band playing this so i went back to my sister's catalogue and i managed to get myself a K Les Paul copy. Now this guitar was a sweet little guitar. It had twin DiMaggio super distortion pickups which were absolutely awesome. Uh, the neck was a weird shape. It was rounded on the back but it sent more of a peak in the middle than it, it should have been but I didn't mind that and for a good couple of years that was my electric guitar. That's what I spent learning to play Black Sabbath songs on. Uh, I sat through all my Black Sabbath collection, learned all those songs and a hell of a lot of new wave of British heavy metal songs as well. And as much as I love that guitar, I thought, I want to fly in V, I want to be KK Downing. So in 1983, for Christmas of that year, I taught my mum and dad into putting down the deposit for a 1968 Mark I Flying V and that's what I got for Christmas that year. I absolutely love that guitar and it took me a good couple of years uh, of paying it off each week. Uh, that stayed with me all the way through my years with Scrum as well as other bands that I'd been trying to get together before with Scrum and all the way through uh, to Simeon Jackal. And of course, then in early 1990s, uh, I became a single parent. So being in bands had to be put on the back burner. And that's when it was hit and miss as to when I picked my guitar up. Yeah, so it came 
to uh, the early 90s, like I said, and I became a single parent, which meant being in bands had to be put on the back burner. And the longer the year went on, the less I was picking my guitar up. And uh, I come to the, the thinking that uh, maybe I've had enough of guitars now. Is it just sat in the corner being an ornament? Uh, a friend of mine worked at a guitar shop owned by someone who I will just name as Mick. For those of you who know me and are from around here, you'll know exactly who Mick was. He's no longer with us, unfortunately. Um, so he sort of uh, got word back to Mick. That I was thinking of, if not selling uh, my Flying V, probably part chopping it for something different. So, you know, it was just sat there doing nothing. So my mate come along and said, oh, go and have a word with me, go and have a word What's that word we about that guitar? So I went along and I was sort of like, well, I'm on with an R and I don't really want to, to get rid of it. But of course he worked on me and he was all, look, it's the 90s, nobody plays Gibsons anymore. It's all, Ibanez's and PRS and all those kind of guitars. Um, there's no money in the, in Les Pauls, and you know that's how he, he kept putting his argument across. And so I just went away for a couple of weeks, thought about it. And I thought, well, I don't I don't really want to be left without a guitar. So. I went back and I said, look, I'm still umming and ahhing, I don't know. And he says, right, I'll make, I'll make you a deal. Your guitar is, you know, it's 30 years old. I'll give you a straight swap for a brand new one. Like, oh, brand new guitar. Like, oh, right, so what, what, are you, what are you thinking of there? And he says, got this Tanglewood Explorer. Tanglewood are going to be massive. They're going to be up there with Ibanez. People are going to be chomping at the bit to get Tanglewood guitars. I'll do you a straight swap for this because your guitar is going to be worth 200 quid tops. If you sell it private, nobody's going to give you any more than that. And just remember that he'd been working on me for, for weeks. He'd been asking me back in the shop and, you know, working his magic which is more black magic than white magic i can tell you so in the end i went mm, uh, yeah, go on then it's a brand new guitar i've had me use of this let somebody else get it and he says you'll not regret it this guitar is brilliant and this is the guitar he swapped did me a straight swap for and this is the only photograph i have of uh, that tanglewood explorer uh, here it's been played by my late great mate Mick Cutts, who we all sorely miss still to this day. Now, it wasn't long, it was only a couple of weeks afterwards and I got this guitar home. Then I realised what a bag of crap that guitar was. It was about 200 quid brand new, it was a cheap guitar and it was crap. The pickups on it were awful. It was really tinny. It, it just didn't play right. It was awful. And I thought I've made a mistake here. So I thought I'll, I'll go back and see what you've got the flying V up for. So I went back to his shop. Had a look around and it's not on the wall. It's nowhere to be seen. I'm like, all right. So I went up to him and was like, oh, Flying this, somebody bought it and he just starts laughing, didn't he? And everybody who knows me knows that laugh he did because he, he never laughed. Only when he's fucked somebody over good and proper and he's come out smelling the roses on it. And he went, oh, that, that's in America. I'm like, what do you mean it's in America? He said, oh, somebody in America bought that. that that's gone. That was like a kicking the bollocks to me. I was so deflated. So I went home a few days later and made a work and come down and said, oh, it's in, in America, mate, it's gone. I'm fucking gutted. I, I, I changed my mind. Yeah, I, I made a mistake. And he was like, yeah, I know. He says, 
He says, sorry about that. And I says, well, how much did he get for it? In the end, because he's you know, telling me uh, it, you know, it's going to be a couple hundred quid here. And he didn't want to answer me at first. And I was like, come on, how much did he get for it? He sold it to a guy in America for eleven $1 hundred dollars. You might as well have just shot me in the back of the fucking head right there and then. That's when I knew I had been played better than I had ever been played that guitar. He'd played me from the off. He'd already got a, a buyer lined up. It was just getting that guitar out of my grasp. But then it's gone. It's in America and there's nothing I can do about it. And that is the biggest regret of my life. And being a cancerian, <laughs> I do beg grudges. Things bug me. Things do stick with me. And that is the biggest regret of my life. I wish to this day, if I could go back in a time machine, I'd stop myself from doing it. It's the biggest regret I have ever had getting rid of my Les, uh, Les Paul, sorry, my Gibson Flying V. So anybody out there in America that's watching this video, it'd be a very, very, very long shot. Um, if you bought a Flying V from a guitar shop over here in the UK uh, in the late 90s, uh, it was a Gibson Flying V case, the actual Flying V shaped case. It wasn't an oblong one, it was a Flying V shaped case. The inside was purple, if I can remember. I think it was a purple fuzzy lining in there. I can't remember the model number, the serial number on the guitar, but there are two characteristics that will be there, and you'll know it's that one. The first one is it would have had the band name Simeon Jackal spray painted on the case. I made a stencil and it was spray painted on there. So that's probably been either faded off now or painted over, I don't know. But there is one little uh, blemish on the guitar that will make it stand out unless it has been repaired. Now where the neck joins onto the body of the guitar, just underneath the neck, there was a chunk of wood that had been, uh, I don't know if the guitar had been dropped or hit or whatever it was. It was like that when I bought it, but it was sort of like a, a slither of the wood had been knocked off, chipped off, call it what you will. And where the the body of the guitar was like that light browny colour, that was dark, almost black, because it had been got muck in it and all sorts. <laughs> uh, and it had all, it had all but it had gone discoloured, it was really a dark colour. So that's like a sort of like a standout little uh, feature on it. Uh, also as well, it had Gibson Deluxe machine heads on it, which uh, I can remember uh, a few years prior before that, uh, the same chap was trying to get me to swap the machine heads on it. He wanted those machine heads. Uh, they were going to give me these really crappy two throw away bar bargain basement machine heads and I'm like no way on your bike you'll you know touching that so but there we go I'm not looking to rebuy it because I haven't got that kind of money but it'd be nice to know you know who ended up with it and you know have you still got it you know have, did you go out and perform with it did you record with it whatever it'd be not, just nice to know so there we go biggest regret of my life that I'm going to talk about on YouTube was getting rid of my beloved Flying V Mark 1. I'm going to go away now, lie down in the dark room and have a cry. <laughs> and that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed that one. Please remember, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to my channel. It'd be very much appreciated. And also, don't forget to ring that little notification bell.